All right, welcome back. Uh, this is the Mapper uh, Let's Program, and we're going to go ahead and make this build things that look like rooms. So since right now it's quite random, sometimes you get really good visuals and sometimes you get total crap visuals, we're going to go ahead and make it so that these visuals, crap or not, are going to look more like rooms. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make it so that it doesn't print in red anymore. Instead, we're going to assign a color uh, one of the various shades of gray, and not in the uh, popular, uh, not not of the popular book, but just normal shades of gray, uh, which is going to be in. Is it in brush and brush? So when we uh, make the color equal red, we actually want to make it so that. Where do we assign the color? There it is. We actually want to make this a random color, so um, a random shade. So uh, switch, yeah, capitalize everything for me. Um, random dot range zero comma four. Oh, I need to have another parenthesis there. There we go. So this dot color equals white will be the default. Now color dot white. Case one, this dot color equals new color. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a very light gray, uh, like 0.85f, 85f, 85f, one, break. And let's go ahead and make this one a slightly darker gray. And then let's go ahead and make this one a distinct gray. Now just that should actually add quite a bit of life into our uh, mapping program, except for it didn't take. Oh. There we go. So now you can see, I don't know, you if you're watching this in low res, pump up the resolution. Um, this is worth seeing in higher res, uh, but you can see I'll go ahead and zoom way in for those of you who have decided you don't you don't do that high res stuff. You can see that these rooms now have some level of distinction to them. Uh, now, whether you use this just for for color for your maps or whether those colors actually mean something is up to you. Um, and you can also regulate that. For example, you might make it so that um, when a brush draws, it always draws the darker of the two colors or the brighter of the two colors rather than simply overriding each color. But we have another problem with this, and that is that we have this extremely linear system running. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to ban brushes moving in the same direction as their parent uh, in one situation, in the one specific case we're looking for, which is uh, this one. No. Yeah, yeah, this one. Um, when we actually pop off a new brush, we want to make sure it can't go in the same direction as the parent brush. So in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and replace best delta direction with best limited delta direction. And uh, we're going to have to specify the current dx and dy, which we'll just do by saying brush dot d, uh, no, uh, uh, dx and dy, like that. So best limited delta is not yet created. We're just going to go ahead and create it. Is that what I called it? Best limited delta direction? Yeah, there it is. And all we really want to do is make sure that, um, oh, uh, is make sure that we don't go in the same direction as uh, as we were. So here we're just going to go ahead and say that um, uh, uh, if dy equals negative 1, I guess we'll put this here, up equals, we're just going to hard, we're just going to hard code this to be an arbitrary um, we're just really forcing this. It's it's not. This is not the best way to do it, but I don't care. Uh, 
Oh, this isn't DUI, it's old DUI. And this is old DUI. There we go. So all we've just done is said that if we're traveling in that direction, artificially inflate um, that the direction that we're going so that it doesn't it doesn't continue being valid. And you can see that that did absolutely nothing because I got it backwards. We don't want this to be a high number. We want this to be a low number. <sighs> okay, let's try that. There we go. So now you can see that we've got a lot of diagonal directions running here. Um, and this is the sort of thing where you can actually do a lot of polish here. You can make it go in any way you'd like. One of the things we're doing is uh, we have a very short lifespan. Um, these brushes do not run for long. And it might be worthwhile to try a longer lifespan. So uh, this here with the range between 1 and 5, let's go ahead and make that a range between 5 and 15. And that will allow these brushes to run for, oh, maybe not. Did I, did I misinterpret what that means? I did. I must have. Oh, 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 oh. Can paint. Um, no, that should be all fine. I think I have a bug in my code where it kills off the brush. Uh, let's go ahead and make it so it's just one brush uh, stroke. That's not it. And let's watch this console for a second. Yeah, see here it immediately says the stroke can't paint. So let's go ahead and debug why that is. And I'm just going to show it to you because, eh, whatever. So uh, we say that the stroke can't paint here in this not, if, if brush can't paint, then blah, blah, blah. So can paint is the function that we've got our problem in. So we need to determine what color is causing it to fail to paint. Um, First off, we want to know what color we currently are, so let's go ahead and just put both of these here. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what sort of complaints this brush has. Current is black, so I'm erroring on white. But it's the only thing painting, so it's erroring on itself? Yes, it is. You know, I think I might have the DX and the DY backwards. No, I guess not. It's the same in both. Hmm. Well, let me go ahead and figure it out. Alright, I paused it for like a quarter of a second. The problem is that when our brush spawns a new brush, the new brush writes over uh, our brush going in another direction, and it ends up making it so that there is an error. Um, uh, so, you know, one brush will be painting, you'll have a brush painting along like this, and it'll spawn a brush that paints this. And then it'll go, okay, now it's my turn to paint. Oh, wait, there's already something there. So uh, the brush that we're currently on moves into black space and then attempts to paint or attempts to look sideways in each way. And it sees that there's another brush that's painted something. So it pops up a, wait, I can't paint there error. How do we fix that? Well, one of the things we can do is we can just actually remove this entirely and just make this return true. Now this is a silly thing to do right now, but we're actually going to go ahead and change how this works in the future. So, um, 
Oh, the spawning is too aggressive. And they last too long now. So this is basically, uh, you, are, you are witnessing me farting around. And, uh, uh, <laughs> that's very dense. And so it's probably not very interesting to you, and I'm sorry about that. So the big problem with this method is that when the brushes are allowed to paint whenever they want, they just create this interlocked matrix. So what we're going to do in the next episode is we're going to introduce the concept of a wall. Walls are important because they allow us to really moder moderate the way brushes work, and they allow us to build doors, which allows us to take it from just an arbitrary map into an actual room. Um, but that'll have to wait until next time.